Welcome to this rather different Mothering Sunday service. Over just a few days, our lives have changed rather dramatically as we each seek to do what we can to halt the spread of the COVID-19 virus. But isn't it comforting to know that God remains in control? Isn't it comforting to know that he is compassionate, loving and caring, and that he does not change? The prophet Isaiah spoke of God. He says, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. That comfort we think about in our service this morning as we look to Jesus and see how he was compassionate and brought comfort to a mother who had lost her son. Let's begin with a prayer. Loving Father, comforter of your people, thank you that we can always depend on you. Comfort us now, especially as we can't meet together as your people. Overcome our isolation, anxiety and fear as we remember that even the gates of hell will not overcome your church on earth and that your love never fails. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we come to a time of confession, we remember before our compassionate God those things that we have done that have displeased him, that we know are not in line with who he is and his love for us. Let's take a moment of quiet to think on our lives, our hearts, our words, our deeds.
Our loving Father, your love gives us life from the moment of conception. Yet we fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good, yet we seek our own good and not the good of others. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help, yet we ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, restore us into his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. collect the special prayer for Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. Then he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, Get up. 
the dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. Motherhood is fundamental to life. It embodies that close, life-giving, nurturing, comforting, without which none could live. For a mother to lose her child is to lose something irreplaceable. In our reading, we meet a mother who has already lost her husband and now her son. Jesus' own mother, Mary, would soon find herself in that same situation. And it's difficult to read this passage without Mary and Jesus' compassion to her in mind. Let's think about what Jesus did. In our reading from Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. These verses, they sit between Jesus healing the servant of a Roman centurion and John the Baptist sending word to ask Jesus if he is the one who had come to rescue God's people. This amazing miracle, raising the widow's son from dead to alive, it stands as proof that Jesus is indeed the one sent to rescue humanity. Let's look at verse 11, where our reading began. Soon afterwards, that soon after the healing of the centurion's servant, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the town was with her. The meeting of the two crowds ensured there would be plenty of witnesses to what was about to happen. We're told very simply but very clearly that this widow now had no immediate family. She'd lost her husband and now her son, a young man, we're told later in verse 14. This woman is thus insecure socially and very likely financially. Nain was not a wealthy place at all. She knows the pain of loss and grief and now what it is to be alone, isolated. And I know many of us do too. And that, of course, can feel so much worse at this time of increased isolation. And Jesus is moved. He's moved by this desperate situation. His heart goes out to the widow. Verse 13. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her and he said, Don't cry. Jesus is revealed here as being so deeply compassionate and caring. He says, don't cry. What words of comfort. Wherever we are at this precise moment, many of us are likely feeling more isolated, anxious and fearful than usual. And Jesus, ever the same, he does not change. He has compassion. He cares. But Jesus doesn't only care, he is active. Then, when he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still, he said, Young man, I say to you, get up. Jesus, he goes up to this uh, bier, the plank that the young dead man was lying on, and he touches it. To touch the dead, indeed to touch anything that they were lying on, was forbidden in Jewish law. It would make the person unclean. They'd have then to isolate themselves. But nothing 
can make Jesus unclean, which is why he never has to stay away from anyone. Nothing will stop him reaching out. Nothing will stop him reaching out to you in your isolation, anxiety and fear. His desire is to meet us in our needs, whatever they may be. Yes, even today, he reaches out and he speaks. He spoke to this young man. Young man, I say to you, get up. Life returns. The young man speaks, fully restored. And Jesus, we're told, gives him back to his mother. The young man gets his life back, his mother back. The mother gets her son back. She is restored as the mother of a living son. Love replaces grief. Relationship replaces isolation. Security is given back to the vulnerable as Jesus reverses the brokenness of creation. When the two crowds saw this incredible miracle of compassion, they conclude, verse 16, God has come to his people. And God does not change. Even today, Jesus is completely able to deal with everything we face. This week, this month, in the remainder of the year, however long it takes us to get through this period of isolation, of anxiety, of fear. Do you know, I have been so moved by the way so many have responded out of love, care and compassion. Together, we're working on uh, ways to meet the pastoral, practical or physical care needs of those in the church family and beyond. We're working on a way of strengthening us in prayer. And so the church office will be in regular contact via email, phone or through letterboxes. But for now, yes, even today, as you think of your brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever they may be, as you think of them, why not pray for them? As you pray for them, why not turn and pick up the phone and speak to them, pray together? Let's keep in contact, keep reaching out and deepening our fellowship, even though for a while we can't meet together. This coronavirus is undeniable evidence that creation is broken. That it won't win is proof that God remains in ultimate control. That it can't win is proof that Jesus is with us, full of compassion and love, continually reaching out to us so that we know God has come to help his people. Let's pray to him now. Lord God, our heavenly Father, you are ever full of compassion and mercy. Out of love for us, you sent your son Jesus into this broken world. And so we thank you that he is with us in our isolation, anxiety and fears. Please sustain us through the weeks and months ahead. Thank you for the fellowship of our church family. Help us to trust you to provide, to keep and to raise us up and unite us together again that we may be your people, vibrant in fellowship and love. For we ask it in the name of our Saviour, Jesus. Amen. Lord God, you have filled our lives with so many mums, grandmas, aunts, godmothers and family friends who love us and take care of us. Thank you. But we often forget how hard a job they have. We're sorry for the times when we haven't appreciated all that these women have to cope with. Lord God, bless these women who, like Eve, have children who argue and are rivals. Like Hagar, are bringing up children on their own. 
Like Hannah had been separated from their child. Like Sarah have waited many years to become a mother. Like David's mother are raising children who will follow God. Like Bathsheba have sick children. Like Joseph and Benjamin have experienced the death of their own mum. Like Moses' mother have children who will do important things for God. Like Pharaoh's daughter are called to love and raise other people's children. Like Timothy's mother are teaching their children the truths of God. And like Mary, have to watch their own child go through suffering. Just as you showed your love to these women throughout the Bible, help us to show our love to those women who take on the job of mothering each of us. Jesus, our town is facing unusual times that we've not experienced before. Thank you that we live in a town surrounded by beautiful countryside that we can still walk in and enjoy. But we also think about those living on the outskirts of the town, down quiet lanes where no one walks. They may be feeling more isolated than ever. Thank you that so many of the town's services are still running, such as the treatment centre, the doctors, the recycling collection and the emergency services. But we also think about those businesses that will be closed and worried about where their income will come from. Thank you that we have shops we can walk to and local schools who will continue to provide for the children of key workers. But we also think about the comments that will be thrown at those working in shops and schools as people express their frustration and anxiety. Thank you for the many people in Shepton Mallet who have started thinking creatively, using social media or offering help to ease the feeling of isolation and panic. But we also think about those in our town who cannot access the technology that's giving so much support to many of us. Jesus, we bring our thanks for our town and the many servant-hearted people who live here. But we also bring our concerns for our town and for those people who really need to know that you are with them at this time, that you see them and that you hear their worries. Be their strength and be their solution. Amen. Dear Father God, with so much fear in the world and people trying to live with it in anxiety, may your church continue to point to Jesus, your Son, our Saviour and our only hope, the one who is able to liberate us and forgive us. Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. Jesus, during your ministry on earth, you showed your power and caring by healing people of all ages and stations of life from physical, mental and spiritual ailments. Be present now to people who need your loving touch because of COVID-19. May they feel your power of healing through the care of doctors and nurses. Take away the fear, anxiety and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment or under quarantine. Give them a sense of purpose in pursuing health and protecting others from exposure to the disease. Protect their families and friends and bring peace to all who love them. Amen. We do not always remember to be grateful, Jesus, especially when we are facing scary situations. We do not always remember to rely on you, Jesus, when we are feeling afraid. We do not always remember that you supply all we need. But the words of the prayer you taught your friends remind us these things. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When my heart is overwhelmed, I will look to you alone. God, my rock, God, my rock, God, my rock. You will stand when others fall. You are faithful through it all. God, my rock, God, my rock, God, my rock. In the blessing, in the pain. Through it all, you Let go of me. 
storms you have held me in your arms God my rock God my rock God my rock in the blessing in the May Christ's holy, healing, enabling spirit be with you and guide you on your way at every change and turn. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now in the weeks and months to come and evermore. Amen. I trust in you.